Now, I would like to introduce uh, another person who has really put heart and soul into this march. Uh, many of you know him, be you adults or children that are here. It's um, Montreal's uh, famous Rabbi Ruben Pupko, who is the... <laughs> the rabbi of Beth Israel, Beth Aaron Synagogue in Montreal. Rabbi Pupko is, as most of you know by now, a highly passionate individual who very strongly believes in the importance of this journey and has really been a catalyst in terms of the growth of the program in Canada. So I give you Rabbi Pupko. You know, I wish uh, all of you had the opportunity to stand where I'm standing because it's a beautiful sight to be on the outskirts of Jerusalem at this magical moment of transition and to be with all of you and, and to see an extraordinary group of young Jews who are committed heart and soul uh, to the Jewish people and to the state of Israel. It's an honor, a humbling honor uh, to be part of uh, this beautiful, this, mo this wonderful moment. When we talk about uh, transition between Yom Atzmut and uh, between Yom Zikaron and Yom Atzmut, the entire March of the Living is about transition from witnessing and visiting the sites of the destruction of European Jewry and then getting on a plane and arriving here in the state of Israel, the homeland of the Jewish people. Jewish people were born and 63 short years have built an extraordinary country and that transition is something which takes your breath away to contemplate and to experience an extraordinary transition what people may not fully comprehend is what a profound transition it was in history it was the single most significant reversal of fortune the entire history of mankind. At the end of World War II, we were a broken and shattered people. At the end of World War II, a third of us had been lost. We were in despair and we were broken. During the years of World War II, we were weak. We couldn't protect our families, our children. We couldn't protect ourselves. It seemed as if the world was divided between those who sought to destroy us and the rest of the world denying us entree. And then, a couple of years later, a Jewish state is declared, independence for the Jewish people. A reversal of fortune, the likes of which haven't been written in anyone else's textbooks, only in ours. A reversal of fortune from the weakest the powerless and the homeless to being a strong and proud and independent people. And I want to tell you something that I'm not sure everyone here really appreciates. I'm the rabbi of a synagogue back home in Montreal. And I tell you this and I tell it to audiences in Montreal as often as I can. The synagogues, the schools, community centers, our buildings, our community buildings back home in Montreal or Toronto or Calgary or in Panama, wherever. Those buildings, those institutions, these communities, they exist for one reason, one reason only. Because of the state of Israel. Without them, these institutions would not exist. We were destroyed as a people after World War II. The state of Israel resuscitated us and brought us back to life. Think about the reversal of fortune. In the years of the war, no one wanted us. They conspired to make sure we could not find refuge anywhere. And the Nazis, wherever they marched, wherever they went, they found collaborators, whether it was in Poland or the Ukraine or Lithuania or Latvia or in Hungary. They found people who helped them in France. They found people everywhere. And now, just a few years later, we, the Jewish people, are the single most protected people on earth. And let me explain why. When the Soviet Union collapsed, everyone was charging for the gates. There was but one people who found a home waiting for them somewhere else. And that was the Jews of the former Soviet Union. Before the Soviet Union collapsed, 
Jews would bribe government officials to have the word Evrei removed from their identity papers, the word for Jew, so that their children could get the education that they wanted and get the jobs that they wanted. And then what happens? The Soviet Union collapses and something extraordinary happens. You have non-Jews in the Soviet Union begging Jewish agency officials to declare them Jews because to be a Jew is to have a home. To have a, be a Jew is to have a place that will always welcome you and never turn you away. To be a Jew today is to be the most protected people on earth. <laughs> Africans have been taken out of their continent before, but never to freedom. It is only the Jews of Ethiopia that have been taken and brought to their home and to be given the dignity that they deserve as our brothers and our sisters. We are the most protected people on earth just decades after being the weakest. It's a reversal of fortune that has never been seen before. You know, um, we've just spent a day contemplating the losses incurred by soldiers in Israel's defense forces. 22,867. 2,443 victims of terror. Families broken. Lives shattered. Youth destroyed. And we remember them. But we also must reflect on our own responsibilities. You know, we talk about how the fact is that we are one people. I'm a no matter where we live, we are united and we are one people. But let's be honest with each other, at least at this moment. We are one people, but the burden is not shared equally. We who have relegated ourselves to the sidelines of Jewish history and diaspora, we do not bear the consequences of defending this state. We may call ourselves one people, but it is upon the shoulders of the soldiers of the state of Israel alone that the burden falls to defend the state and the future of the Jewish people. We do not share that burden. Parents in Israel send their young men, men and women off to war and they must worry every day. There is no similar consequence in Montreal or Toronto. They are the ones who carry that burden. And remember something else, there is a responsibility that we do carry. <coughs> The soldiers of the State of Israel have been vilified and criticized across the globe. They have been libeled everywhere in ways which not only are lies but are the exact opposite of the truth. And we have an obligation to defend their honor. They are our brothers and our sisters, our sons and our daughters, and we know them better than BBC or CBC or the Toronto Star. We know them better than CNN. We know that their hearts are pure and that their hands are clean, and we must defend their honor. You know, when you walk through the streets of Israel, and I want to say this to the young people, by the way, I want to say something that's very important to be said, because too many people of my age forget this. The young people sitting here today, who've gone through Poland and have seen the horrors of that time and have now come to Israel. They have come an age after the majestic moments of Israel's history that inspired the people of my generation. They have come of age after the Six-Day War, after the Yom Kippur War, after Entebbe, after the immigration from the Soviet, former Soviet Union and, and from Ethiopia. They have come of age after the time of Israel's glorious heroes and extraordinary leaders and I have to tell you something no matter what anybody else says about them we must correct the record they are as committed to the state of Israel they are as committed as Zionists as any generation of the Jewish people and they deserve an extraordinary debt of gratitude and they deserve our support because they are committed to the state of Israel, although they grew up after those majestic moments. They are an extraordinary group of people. <laughs> you know, the, um, you know when, uh, when you walk the streets of Jerusalem, and I say this to young people, you know, you know I'm going to say something you already know. The truth is, you're walking on your own streets. When you stand on the western, at the Western Wall, it's your wall. Jerusalem is your city. 
This country is your country. When you got off that plane at Ben Gurion Airport, you came home. Remember that. This is the only place in the world where a Jew is completely at home. Think about your future. Think about where you want to study. Think about where you want to live. Think about the, the part of this land that can be yours, yours in a real and tangible way. This is your home. This belongs to you. It is your heritage, it is your legacy. It belongs to you. Its story is your story. The beauty of this land emanates from the collective consciousness of every Jew everywhere. It is your land. You have come home. You feel prouder here and more secure here than you do anywhere else on the globe. This is your home. Remember that as you spend the next few days in Israel. Remember that as you long for this land. And remember that as you think about the future of the Jewish people and your own future. You have said over and over again, Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people live. It is up to you to bring that to life. This is your story. Bring it to life. Defend it wherever you go. The best thing anyone can say about any one of us is that we are Zionists. It is a source of honor. It is a source of pride. It is our glorious, glorious achievement. Thank you.